Turning points change the course of our lives, whether it's a big decision, overcoming an obstacle or tragedy, or taking a leap of faith. These stories of inspiration and resilience are what Turning Point is all about. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another incredible Turning Point story. Today, our guest is sharing her story for the very first time. Paulina Monroe is a yoga teacher and a mindfulness and meditation coach based in Toronto, but her life looked quite different in April of 2018 when she was a personal injury lawyer on her lunch break. She was walking along Young Street in Toronto with a colleague and a van drove up on the sidewalk, narrowly missing Paulina and her friend. That van was driven by Alec Manassian, and in the minutes after that, he sped along the sidewalk, killing 10 people and injuring 16 others. Today, Paulina is joining us to talk about how that tragedy became a major turning point in her life. Thank you so much for being here, Paulina. I'm so excited to be here with you. We're really happy to have you. And I should mention to everyone that we've actually been friends for years. Uh, we met in 2013. At that time, uh, you were in law school. I was doing my master's. We were both in Halifax. Uh, and then, of course, we both ended up here in Toronto. So I've, uh, I've been around for so much uh, of your journey, both, of course, before uh, this happened uh, and, and after. And so much has happened since uh, that day in 2018. How are you doing now? I feel so amazing right now. It's just been beyond words incredible to have gone through this transformation and this whole thing has been the biggest blessing of my life. I want to, I mean, I, I just have to say like on a personal note, seeing you now, it's, it is such a transformation. I mean, when all of this happened, when the van attack happened in 2018, it was it was horrible, of course, you know, um, for for everyone to heard about it, but let alone to be somebody who was so close uh, and who saw everything happen. So take me back to that day. It was April 23rd, 2018. Uh, what do you remember? I was going for a walk. We went for walks every lunchtime. We had just left the building. It was a normal day and all of a sudden I heard, thankfully heard someone honking their horn, decided to turn around and saw a van coming up the sidewalk. And at first I thought maybe it was an accident or maybe they were trying to get away from the police and instantly I realized he was coming up intentionally and, and didn't plan to stop. Wow, so you were with a friend, a colleague at the time, and what did you do? I saw the van coming towards us and those instants feel like an eternity. I saw it coming up and my mind was willing me to say something, to move, to do anything and I was totally frozen there. I saw him coming towards us and thankfully in an instant my body just knew what to do. It reached out, it grabbed her, pulled us to safety but unfortunately he kept going and hit multiple people, multiple women and kept continuing, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you would have witnessed him obviously continuing down the sidewalk and, and did you freeze after, you know you said you pulled your friend out of the way, but what happened in the moments after, do you remember? Oh, of course, I remember everything, I remember the smells, the sounds, and it just is frozen in time. It seems like it lasted for hours. It was just even less than a minute or two that he was in my area. But I mean, that's something, unfortunately, I'll never forget. Seeing someone intentionally speeding up and driving into, I mean, she was an, the first one I saw was an older woman, and then continuing to accelerate down to continue striking people, I mean, never will I ever forget that. It was so traumatizing. I am I was a news anchor uh, when all of this happened. You know, the story was in the news uh, quite a bit, of course, uh, here in Toronto, nationally, even internationally, uh, and it still is with uh, Alec Manassian's trial happening recently. So how have you handled that over time? You know, it, it, for some people who experience personal tragedy, you can have some control over uh, when you when you think about it and, you know, when you're reminded of it. Um, but in this situation, you really haven't had that. It, it can come on the news at any time or I'm sure pop up in your social media feed. Um, so how has that been? The next day, I remember getting in an Uber and trying to seek help and seek, 
seek therapy and of course all the radio stations could not stop talking about what had happened so you're right even for months after and then for years after it's still popping up and I was working with victim services they were beyond helpful so in the beginning anytime there would be a little flare-up or he would be in the news they would give us a warning not to turn things on or not to read things and I just honestly I avoided the news for so long for so long just because it's unavoidable yeah absolutely those constant reminders would be would be really challenging um, especially since you were there of course you know at this time um, you had a very demanding job yourself you were working up to 80 hours a week um, you were incredibly busy it was a very stressful job of course you were a personal injury lawyer so in the weeks in the days after the van attack what happened for you yeah so I couldn't after the van attack happened I was so frozen my head almost detached from my body I couldn't eat I couldn't sleep. Thankfully, I got connected to an amazing therapist who was able to also monitor medications. So I'm very grateful for that. But the only real thing I could do was work. I was still not ready to face the music or to look inside. So I just put my focus on work. And it was, <laughs> it was awful. I mean, working that much is something I hope to never return to. But it was all I could do, so I would wake up in the morning, cry, get on the subway, cry, um, have a meeting with a client, have to pop outside the hallway, cry. It just went on all day like this. Um, fortunately, a gift was getting laid off about two months after. So I had been working, working, working for years, and then all of a sudden, nothing. And that was, I mean, a gift but one of the most challenging things to have that big chunk of your life and so much of my identity I felt like it had been taken from me but now looking back totally a gift. It's interesting that you can say that now because I do remember when that happened um, as we're friends I remember thinking no like yeah. this can't happen right now you've already had to deal with so much and and now you know to to get laid off like this isn't fair and it turns out you know the universe was really looking out for you because after that you um, you did apply for other jobs you did interviews um, but this is where a big shift really started to happen for you totally so I remember I one of the biggest, again, I'm going to say this a million times, but one of the biggest gifts through this transformation has been able to tune into my body and tune into how I feel. For so long, I was pushing away how I felt in search of something beyond myself. So I remember that feeling of getting laid off. And of course, I cried. Um, I couldn't stop at that point. But I felt such a relief in my body and in my mind. So but I ignored it. Um, I kept, I took a little bit of a break. My therapist recommended a break, but I think maybe two weeks after I had another interview with a similar litigation firm. And I remember walking in, having such horrible feelings, going through the interview, saying, of course, whatever they needed me to say and walking out feeling miserable and that's when I decided I could either keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results or I could really take this time and use it as an opportunity and it's been incredible. It's been incredible and I am so thankful that I did not keep on that path because it just was not for me and my body was screaming at me <laughs> that it wasn't for me. Yeah. So you talk about kind of making this decision to to take some time for yourself, like you said, and and kind of uh, be introspective and and think about you know what you want and what makes you happy and and what did this involve exactly? Like, well, at first it was just I was hustling to get another job, maybe not directly in law, but a job that did not make me feel the way that that job did. So I read voraciously. I read so many books on jobs and then that turned into life and then that turned into spirituality because everything is so connected work is such a huge part of all of our lives and i believe that we want what we want for a reason but sometimes we seek those feelings in different ways so 
I was reading all these books on career and how to find the career you want and how to find your why. And I had to keep writing these lists about what lights you up. How do you fill your day when you've got only yourself to focus on? And I kept writing down yoga, meditation, uh, walks in nature. But I would look at the list and think, doesn't everyone have the same list? I mean, it just makes perfect sense to me. But never in a million years, even though I, at that point, already had been a yoga teacher, I never in a million years thought that that's what I would be doing today. Wow. You know, hearing you say all of this, I... I have to ask about your relationship with family and friends at this time because I, as your friend, I remember thinking to myself like, oh, I, I just really hope she gets a job. You know, like I think that that's because I do think that, and I, I, I really don't like that I thought that now, you know, because I think I'm so proud of you and you obviously made the right decision in, in taking this time for yourself. But um, I know I wasn't the only one. And did you feel a lot of that pressure from family and friends who, who maybe didn't think you were making the right decision? Of course, everyone wants to see their loved ones safe and secure. And I think that in so many people's eyes, if I had just gotten a job and gotten back to work, then I would have been back to normal which is what everyone wanted. I mean, everyone has their own fears and you want to see your loved ones doing well, but it was really a challenge. Like not only was I carrying the burden of what I had just seen and almost dying, like all these things, but also having to carry other people's worries and fears. And I wanted to get a job so badly to show not only myself, but other people that I was okay. And to, you know, I had, I think everyone can understand this, especially right now, all that I wanted was to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. And what I've created through this transition, through this transformation is something so incredible and so beyond normal that I, I mean, I, can't imagine doing it any other way now, but yeah, everyone wanted me to get a job, every single person, because that would have symbolized that I was fine, that I was better, and that I was back to my normal self. I think the way you just explained that is is perfect, and it's also um, it, it's also making me, uh, in my own way, just reflect on this idea we have of what everyone needs to be quote unquote normal right. and successful and um, and it's it's not fair and it, it really doesn't work for everyone and I think that actually would have made things worse for you if you had just taken any any job just to to satisfy that you know that check that box off and to make the people around you who maybe were pressuring you to do this um, to feel better so how did how did you stay on your own path? Um, well, I've been so lucky to have had, I think that people come into your life, books come into your life um, at certain times to give you what you need. And the scariest thing about this whole situation would have been, I could have so easily seen myself 30 years down the road in a miserable job, in a miserable relationship with you know miserable little kids running around because I would have been so unhappy in the life that I was living before. So I, it really was like finding golden nuggets. It, it's always a challenge to do something that no one expects, not even expects, no one wanted me to do everything that I was doing. And it was a challenge to start trusting myself. I believe that we're all so intuitive and we already know the answers, we have them within. However, we're taught to live such a different way. So I would basically find these golden nuggets um, along the way I would get back to yoga. Okay, that felt so good getting back to yoga. I would take long walks. Okay, that felt so good taking long walks. And then my whole life just started to shift. I started craving things that made me feel good. I started craving healthier foods, spending time with loving people, all these things that I intuitively knew how to do. They just started coming naturally. And it's a really challenging thing to get going 
changing directions, changing a pace and changing the way that you move about the world. However, once you start doing it and you feel that good, that's how I knew. And everything has just come with such ease now. It is totally a different way of living than trying to find purpose and trying to find um, trying to find validation in things outside of myself. And now I don't need any of that. And I live with such freedom and ease. It's a transformation. Yeah, I mean, what you're describing here is the exact opposite of, of your life before, right? The working 80 hours a week as a personal injury lawyer, you really like slowed down. And I love that line of uh, you learned how to trust yourself because you you already knew what you needed inside. You just really needed to, to lean into it and to listen. Um, and part of this path actually took you back to uh, where you were born and raised, which is uh, Nova Scotia, of course. Um, so how was your time there? Yeah, so I just felt a calling back to Nova Scotia and we can maybe get into part of the reason later but I just needed to be in nature I really needed to have that space and time to heal it was for me like the end of a journey of a butterfly when you're really at the end in the cocoon just needing that peace and quiet and it's been an expansion ever since I got home and even before I got home, people were asking me to teach yoga again, which I hadn't done in years. And the feeling that I had teaching yoga was, I mean, I felt so vibrant, so overjoyed. And then that started leading its way into teaching meditation. Um, yoga traditionally is the asanas or postures are meant to prepare your body for meditation and stillness. So. People came to me thinking they were getting the yoga, but I was really sneaking in the medicine through meditation in there. And then it just keeps evolving and growing from there. So it's been such a gift to have trusted my intuition, to have left and then to have been able to come back feeling this strong and capable and free. I mean, I feel in, I feel invincible. I feel like I could step up to any fear in my mind and just use it to fuel me further. Wow, yeah, this, I know uh, it's, it's so interesting how you had been thinking about the meditation and the yoga and kind of craving it. And then as you made this decision to go back to Nova Scotia, these opportunities really came to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you were able to, of course, take advantage of them, but then to really grow them. Um, I know you impacted a lot of people when you were there, when you started teaching uh, yoga and meditation and mindfulness. So uh, what did you hear from people after they would uh, participate in your classes? Yeah, it's been so special to, it's again, we all have these gifts and we think that everyone has them. and. I didn't realize how innate of a teacher and a guide that I was. So to be able to impact the way people feel on such a deep level, because again, it's not just the physical practice of yoga, it's giving people a space to feel and to breathe and to be with themselves in their body without their mindless thoughts and anxiety and everything else that goes along with our day to day. Um, words can't express how amazing that feels so yeah people people would come to me and say these kind words and then I did my first intro to meditation class or course and that the what I get from that is even more incredible like to give people a space they're telling me that they're they sit down and all of a sudden tears come flooding out which I mean, I love that because it gives people a release or to feel like I can give them that bit of pause and people are just craving that now more than ever. And to be able to share that knowledge and those tools is incredible. Yeah. Wow. And what, like, again, what a journey from what you, you know, from the trauma that you experienced after the van attack um, to now turning that into something positive, um, giving this gift, as you say, to to other people. Um, I should mention that along the way, you you know, you had an excellent counselor um, that you talked about, um, and you were diagnosed with PTSD. 
Um, but it, and it was something that you uh, you've shared, of course, with your your close friends and loved ones. Um, but uh, you have only recently kind of started talking about it publicly. And the first time you did that actually was on Instagram. Um, it was the first time I, I, I had, of course, we had talked about it one on one. Um, but that was the first time I saw you say anything publicly about what you had been through. So what kind of response did you get from people? It was overwhelming. Uh, I think after carrying so much shame around going through something like this, to feel that love and support is just indescribable. And what was most surprising to me is that people were so willing to share their own stories with me. So many people are affected by not only trauma, but just everyday stresses, everyday anxieties. Like We're just not feeling good as a whole. So to create that opportunity for people to have a safe space to share that's it was beyond words to hear these stories coming back to me and it makes you feel so loved and supported and that's part of the reason why i have become so ready to share my story is i see the impact and I wish that I had had a story like mine to give me hope and inspiration because things not only get back to normal, but they can become beyond dreams, like whatever you want them to be. So to be able to share that and create space, it's amazing. As we're talking today, I'm kind of reflecting back um, on the past couple of years and hearing you say, you know, as you shared your story, other people started to come to you and share their stories. I, I imagine for many of them, they have also felt similar feelings of, of feeling alone uh, in their experience. And, and that is really challenging. You know, when you're going through something and you feel like you're the only one or the people around you don't understand you, um, did you feel a lot of that, uh, especially in some of those earlier days? Uh, not even in the earlier days. I think for the first two years of it, it's been two and a half or two something now. But for the first two years, I felt so much shame. I did not, even my a lot of my close friends who you weren't, like I wasn't in normal contact with, it's not an easy conversation to get on the phone and explain. And I just did not, I was so embarrassed, I was mortified. So to be able to now see it as a gift, and this all started when I was applying, it was around two years before the van attack, the anniversary of the van attack, and it was when quarantine had started, I was going for all these walks, I was feeling so inspired, I was writing a lot, and it was time for me to write my story. So. I was writing it and then in tandem I was applying for this job with a telehealth company that had a lot of work to do with mental health and mental illness. So that was really the first time I started researching not only mental illness but PTSD specifically and realizing how much of a stigma there was still around it. I mean the facts are incredible with people not wanting to spend time with you, employers not wanting to hire you, employees thinking you're unsuitable for work. One in five Canadians will suffer from a mental illness and that honestly, might, I would not be surprised if that rate was much higher. But when I started reading that, I got really inspired because I realized that I didn't go through what I went through just for myself. I went through it so that I could be there to guide other people or support them or even just by sharing my story and giving a little bit of inspiration. So that was a huge transformation for me. Yeah, wow. And you've already started to to do this, uh, especially, you know, one on one. I know with people um, we mentioned, you know, you had shared a little bit on social media. I, I know that when you and I ha you and I have talked about you sharing your story uh, over time as well. And there was a point where you had thought maybe you would share it, but but do so anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, here we are today. Um, so what made you decide that this was something you wanted to do and that you wanted to to put your face to as well? Yeah, so I it was at this exact time two years before the anniversary and we had actually discussed options for going forward if I wanted to share my story, uh, where could I do it, what would it look like and I had sent the rough draft to a very trusted confidant and 
she was like, let's do it. Let's get this out there. And then uh, two days later, the Nova Scotia shootings, another one of Canada's largest mass murders happened. I'm from Nova Scotia and you know that my heart is always there. So in that moment, feeling or being able to understand what so many people would be feeling, it was, it was like, okay, I have to do this. I can't not do this because my story can give people so much love and so much support. So that was, that was it. That was the moment where I knew, I regretted not doing it earlier. I wasn't able to. But yeah, reading all those facts about the stigma around mental illness, I still wanted to do it anonymously. And then I realized we can't break this thing down. We can't make others feel less alone unless I'm willing to share. And doing that has made me fearless. I, I'm not embarrassed. I'm so proud of everything that I've done and everything that's brought me to where I am today. Yeah. I'm so proud of you too. And I know that when that happened, um, that, that hearing about this awful murder, uh, mass murder in Nova Scotia was so horrifying. It happened also very close to, uh, to where your family is there. You know, and this is part of the reason that you were drawn to go back to Nova Scotia as well. Of course, and spending time there, part of this tragedy happened in my hometown and Nova Scotia, you know, it's a special place for you too. It is a place unlike any other and it is so small. Everyone has been affected through their own personal experience or for knowing someone who's been impacted or even just having to lock their doors now. I mean, that's the that's such a sin. Having you no know, people in Nova Scotia could go for weeks without locking their doors and to have had that simplicity taken away, I was totally, I mean, I couldn't not go back. I couldn't not be there. You know, you mentioned uh, Nova Scotia being a really special place to you. And yes, I mean, I, I agree. I lived there for five years. Uh, my fiance is from there as well. And I know, you know, the when the shooting happened too, you know, people not being able to go home and be with their loved ones if they if they were living away was was so hard and uh, and the the pain of not being able to really be have your community together and I imagine now kind of seeing this through your perspective of knowing that a lot of people there would experience PTSD uh, after this and in, in a very similar way to what you experienced after the van attack. So so you did go back. Um, we talked about how you started to get these opportunities to, to teach yoga and mindfulness meditation. And this is where, you know, I'm thinking of your butterfly imagery again. This is where you really like spread your wings and, and all of these things that, these golden nuggets you had found along the way, it sounds like you were really able to, to put them all together. Mm -hmm. I was so lit up and it is such a difference from when I would wake up miserable, go to work miserable, um, and now feeling overjoyed, delighted. I wake up with such enthusiasm and the most beautiful part of it all is that it all comes with ease, so much ease. It just happens naturally. I didn't have to struggle for it. I didn't have to work myself to death for it. It's just been such a natural progression. What started with teaching yoga turned into meditation and mindfulness. And people can see and feel not only through Instagram, like in the streets, uh, <laughs> through friends, people can see and feel my energy and they know that I'm living in a different way. So people have now started to seek me out for guidance through their own transitions and transformations. So I have been the luckiest to get to support people and also doing energy sessions, which I love. Just being able to help guide people to live with more ease and live with more joy. I think it's such a gift to be able to live authentically and we don't really know what that means. That word is thrown around a lot, but it is such a gift to be able to show people the way through their own intuition. Everyone knows best for themselves, but to be able to support people on their own journey has been a true delight. 
It's so amazing to see you in this position because um, you talked about ease and I think that's the perfect word to describe this. Like this, what you're describing and the person I see in front of me is so different. You know, you're in the same body obviously, but it's like looking at a different person uh, than, than the person I uh, you were two years ago. And it does seem natural, you know? I feel like this is this is who you were meant to be. It's like the butterfly, uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> and it's really, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such an amazing, uh, it's been such an amazing transformation. It's amazing to hear you now also using all of this to give back and to help guide other people. Um, we really started this interview, you know, from a tragic place, you know, it's what sparked all of this, of course, for you. Um, but now you're at a new turning point, a very positive one. Um, you've really found your voice. You're sharing your story for the first time here. I have a feeling it will be the first of very many times uh, that you do this. So what do you hope now for this next chapter? It is just, I am so excited. I cannot wait to see what comes from this. and. I can't wait to keep sharing my story. I want to share it with a larger audience for sure. Just being able to give people inspiration, give people a little brightness or a little bit of joy would be incredible. And I would love to write about this one day. It has been, I, I could not have made this up how this transformation has unfolded. So I can't wait to see how things unfold next. I also cannot wait and just from I get your weekly newsletters and just from seeing your writing in there I cannot wait to see this book you definitely have a book in you um, I think a lot of people after this interview are going to want more from you as well so where can people find you mm -hmm. my website my weekly emails are so much fun to write so I love that you love them too uh, but my email or my website is paulina-monroe.com and you can find me on Instagram at chiplover3. <laughs> chiplover3, love the Instagram handle. Yes, and we'll definitely uh, link to your website as well. Thank you so much for being here, uh, Paulina, and I really can't wait to see what this next chapter has in store for you. Thank you, Angel. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, you know, Paulina has been a great friend of mine for a long time. Um, I've been so uh, inspired by her journey and it was such a pleasure to share this story with you, uh, with all of you today. Uh, you can find more episodes of Turning Point on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you know someone with a Turning Point who you think we should profile on the show, uh, please feel free to drop me a message. You can find my contact information at priasam.com. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, take good care of yourself and of each other.